Hi, welcome to the Blonde Guy channel. Today we're going to talk about the Cub Cadet and the oil leak problems. It's a V-twin Kohler, 25 horsepower. Here we go. All right, first of all, we're going to talk about this, uh, these plugs here that they so graciously give you. They screw into the engine. You turn the yellow piece here, or the black, the black one. Pull this little cap off, drain your oil. But the problem is, these things have an O-ring here in inside, and they go bad. Also, the other problem is they leak right here around these threads. To replace these, if you can't find the proper O-ring, or if they just get to where they won't seal with a proper O-ring, they're like uh, 12 to $15. So we're gonna pause here for a second. I'm gonna show you what we did. All right. Well, first, before we get started with that, we're going to show you that we've already drained the oil and this lawnmower into the approved container. And we've already put it up here in the jug. And that's where the oil filter is going to sit and drain for a while. But right down here is where we're talking about. Right under your starter here. And what we've added is a piece of pipe and a screwed that right into the uh, engine with some Teflon tape. And we've used this plug here. As you can see right up here, there's your plug. That's what it looks like. You pick these up at your auto parts store. They're like five bucks, something like that. But uh, we're gonna show you what we've done. We drained the oil first, and we always like to take this uh, dipstick out so it can get a little more air. All right, now we're gonna pause and we're gonna take this out down here. We're gonna put some new thread tape on that because I got a feeling uh, it might have not have been quite as tight as I originally thought it was. So we're gonna pause. Okay, side note, I've made my first mistake already. Right, don't worry, I'm okay. I got what I need. But I drained the oil into this pan before I was 100% sure I had an oil filter and two quarts of oil. Normally I don't do that. So I'm excited I guess about making this YouTube channel. What we're gonna do is take these pliers here. We're gonna stick them right here. Down here we're gonna unscrew this. And to keep from being bored while I do that, I'm gonna pause. Okay, there's the nipple or the pipe rather, pipe that we took this piece off, this nipple here. Some folks call it the coupler. It's called a coupler, I believe. Um, that right there is on there pretty good. I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna put some Teflon tape on this. I'm gonna take this right here. We'll put this back on. We'll put the plug back in. Um, that's not leaking back in the back. I can see it looks nice and dry. I'm gonna leave that. On the day when I feel bored, we'll see if we can't uh, possibly pull this start off because this nipple, uh, this pipe's is short. But I didn't have a piece to come out longer. I could get the old wrench on it because, but let me tell you, I put the vice grips on there, turned it. She's tight. <laughs> yeah, and I went to tighten all this stuff up here at the very beginning. And uh, that probably helped it tighten up a little bit more. Um, I don't think that's leaking back here, so I think we're good with that. But uh, I like never got this piece out of here because I tightened it up just a few minutes before I go to see if it was tight enough and it turned. So we're going to pause and we're going to put some Teflon tape on this back here. Put this on, put this back together and get some oil in this baby. Then we'll spin around and uh, we're going to get the oil filter taken off. The oil filter's on the other side. And of course, look, it's uphill. Another thing I like to do is put the hours on here. You can put the date, put your hours. This lawnmower does have an hour gauge up on top. Um, this filter here actually looks pretty decent. I mean, that, that fuel there's so clean looking. It's got 110 hours on it. Yeah, it's good to go for a while. I mean, that, that looks like water in there, it's so clean. But you can write the hours here on your, old, on your fuel filters. And, uh, that'll help you out. I like to buy these right here. I'll pick them up at the flea market. 
They used to be a dollar a piece. Now they're like two bucks. And of course I went on Amazon and found me a whole bag for five or six dollars. I've used a few of them. I've been buying these from my local guy, but his prices are a little bit high. And hey, if you can go to Tractor Supply or Walmart or just wherever to, you like to shop, check your prices on this stuff right here. It ain't no sense of paying more than you have to. That's a genuine Kohler oil filter right there for a genuine Kohler engine right there. So, you know. And this stuff right here is pretty much junk. I'm going to take it, put it back in the shop for... Gosh, that was fun. <laughs> oh, we got the Teflon tape on there. Yeah, I had you guys rolling for a few seconds there. I forgot to hit the pause button or didn't hit it hard enough. But now we're going to take this here, little coupler, and we're going to stick it right on there. And we're going to pause for that. But before we do that, people say, is there a wrong way to put Teflon tape on? Sure, there is. You want to take it. Let's see if I can do this with my free hand here. I'm going to take this right here. I was working for a guy one time. He said, I didn't know this wrong way. I said, well, if you put it on the other way, it's just going to fall off. You put it on like this, and you start threading it in that way, that's what's going to happen. So this threads in this direction. So we're going to put it on here like this and we're going to go around like you're threading it in just like that same way we wrapped it on down there and as you turn it should stay right on there i mean the other way is like backing it off so we're going to take that loose put that aside we'll grab this piece right here and we're going to Thread this right in. Let's see. Yep. Just like that. I'm going to spin around. I'm going to thread that in. And what we're going to do is, since we already got that tape on there, we're going to put that on. We're going to turn just like it right there. Clockwise. All right. Now we're going to pause one more time here. All right. There we go. You can see it's in there and we're going to tighten it up this and it will turn this and tighten this piece up i wish i just got a longer piece back here to here and then it would have been sticking away out here which wouldn't hurt nothing but i'm just going to take the old socket here and switch it the right way and snug it up and she's loose so we're going to just keep using it like it right there because I only got one hand. One's on the camera. All right, here we go. It's threading up on that other piece. You can see the back back there is turning along with it. So it's threading up on the other piece. I can feel resistance. Got a good Teflon coating on that there with that tape and here we go with the ratchet turning the whole piece is turning there both pieces are turning and they'll tighten as needed just don't ever tighten it that piece i got back here in the back she must be really good and tight she's got teflon tape on her or something too watch the other piece back there and see if it's still turning as this brass gets tight in that other piece that other piece will turn with it and that's okay Tighten. The other piece back there ain't tighten. Well, it's not turning rather. But you can see this piece is tight. There it goes a little more. It's as it's getting tighter. It's tightening up on the piece back yonder. It's getting over that thread tape. Teflon. Ooh, I 
I think I just tied it up, mama. Mm, there we go. Oh gosh, that wasn't too bad. Alright. Now we're gonna pause. We're gonna spin this thing around, get that oil filter over yonder, downhill. I don't know about you guys, but the mosquitoes are out here in April already and just they're getting crazy. And we're gonna take this right here. Oh, not the red one. We're gonna put this back down here where it goes. Off of that right there. I always put stuff back exactly like it is. You don't want it rubbing and touching something that um that it's not supposed to. Um, that shouldn't be touching your starter wire. I just had to prepare to get it out of my way where I could work where you folks could see what we're doing. This here, like I said, is like $5. Uh, those pieces, I think I had those laying around. A couple bucks. But, all right, we're going to get the tools put up that we don't need and turn this thing around. Okay, to get this thing turned around, I want this oil filter here. As you can see, this oil filter. This oil filter right here, downhill. It's uphill right now, so we're going to spin around. Now, on these long tractors, here's what you got to do. You got to reach for this little peg right here. Here's your instructions. And when you pull this thing out, it goes down. And when you, that disengages your transmission. Um, when you want to put it back in gear, just lift it up and push it in. I've seen some lawnmowers that was made a little different and they'd be half out like that. And somebody messed with it and said, well, I thought I had it in gear. And I said, no, nah, that's in gear all the way. That's all that's wrong with your lawnmower. That right there. Another thing I like about this lawnmower, well, one thing I like about this is this clear gauge on the back. Put your fuel in right up there. Comes out down here, fills up, plumb through the neck. You get quite a bit of fuel. So we're going to turn this thing around. Okay, there she is. I'll turn around, put her back in gear. And of course, you can set your parking brake too while you're at it. Um, this thing ain't going nowhere, so we're not going to worry about it. We'll set it when we start it. You have to. And what you're going to do, get you in a container, and turn that steering wheel back around. Should have left it out there. I think you put an assist it. Just like it. This little container works wonderful. It is an old ice, ice box container for your ice maker. Now let's try it this way. Any way you can get it in there. Yeah, just like that. Little piece of metal here. Slide that under. And people say, why are you so particular about this? Well, number one, I don't want motor oil on the ground. I mean, you're gonna get some on the ground occasionally. The second thing is you don't want motor oil all back in here. I mean, look how clean that is back in there. No oil, no oil in there. If you'd turn this thing the other way and drain the oil out of it, it would run oil all up underneath your engine. You wouldn't been able to see if there was an oil leak down here, which I mean, this thing looks pretty good. This lawnmower has 150 hours on it. It's not a whole lot, but She'll drain right from here in the pan. Then she'll go back into the jug. Okay. This is the kind of oil filter wrench I have for this job. You can buy the little cups on the ratchet. They work just fine. So we're gonna take this thing, we're gonna turn it just down there. We'll push it on down. And we're gonna grab it and see if it works. Or is this one the wrong one? Let's see. I I just can't do this with one hand holding on to it. That's silly me. I had it on the wrong way. <laughs> that's the loose. That's the tighten. It should go that way to tighten. I don't want to tighten. So just turn this thing around. It goes like this. It's an easy mistake. You're getting in a hurry. Got one hand. Let's see if we can get it off of there while filming. Now I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to put the camera down again. Okay, we got it started there. It's still hard to do with your left hand when you're not used to doing it like that. Let's try this. It's just a lot easier to hold it. Get my finger up against it so it don't slip off. That's what it's doing. There we go. 
is loose enough. All right. Sorry about that. Here we go. Drain this all out. And you see that's a Kohler filter. You can buy them. There is an automotive filter that will fit these mowers. You can buy them at your auto parts store for like five bucks, six bucks, seven bucks, something like that. And I've done it in a pinch. Went and got one and used it on a friend's lawnmower that needed oil change. Uh, they work. The only thing is, um, go ahead and put your two quarts of oil in. And when you change the oil, whatever it shows on the dipstick is what it is. If it's a tad low with two quarts in it, that's fine because that other oil filter is longer. I don't have one to show you. But uh, in case you're interested, we'll walk in there and I'll show you what the part number is while this thing's draining down. Look at that. Kitchen eel in the old ice maker. Ice maker bin. Right there she is. That's a Napa Gold Filter 1348. It fits a Brigden Stratton V Twin and other lawn mowers. Um, by the way, just a disclaimer nobody um, asked me to use their stuff, such as filters, such as places I go and shop. None of that is even uh, anything we do. I know earlier I talked about going to Walmart, Amazon, um, uh, I believe Tractor Supply, your local parts guy who sells lumber parts. Um, just wherever you can get it the cheapest. I mean, it's all the same stuff as long as it's packaged. There are some things that I've heard people say don't order off the internet because the parts are counterfeit and that's automotive parts um that i heard recently and you know <laughs> is is do whatever you want to um there was a part for my car and it was going to be four hundred dollars and i know this doesn't re relate to lawnmower repair but this is how cheap you can get stuff it was the multifunction switch for the uh, high and low beam and all the uh, cruise control and stuff. The light came on the car and uh, I'd already been having problems with the uh, high and low beam. Just shake it right up in there. And so, uh, since we was having some problems, we finally had to buy a switch, but I did not want to pay, and I wasn't going to pay no $400 for a multifunction switch. And I thought that was just crazy. There's the old filter. Just talking a little bit while we do some of this stuff. Um, so anyway, I said, uh, that's just crazy. Put that up there. I'm gonna dump his bin in. I called all the parts stores in my town. Every one of them said $400. Even the dealer, $400 for that switch. $400. This is a few years ago before I got on the internet. And I want to mention Amazon because they they sell some good stuff and you can get it cheap. I found a multifunction switch on Amazon and I didn't have an account at the time. And I asked my wife to ask a friend of ours to order one. It came... It was identical to what I had. The wiring, the colors, the print on it, everything. Down to the T. The only difference was the one that I ordered off the internet said made in China. So when I took the steering column, the thing off the steering column, and... Uh, gonna pause for a second need to get some oil on this filter put a little clean oil on the on your on your rubber ring right here put some clean oil on that when you get ready to change these things out there you go 
just a little bit right there. And if this was a not a horizontal type filter, I'd put some oil in there. I mean, you can, but as soon as I put it in there and tip it over, it's going to run out probably. Just to let it sit a few minutes and let that oil work its way down to it. But uh, back to the part that I bought for the car said made in china the one i took off the car that came from a uh, factory said made in mexico so you know what's the difference <laughs> that's the only thing one was embossed made in mexico and where the made in mexico sticker would be on the part it had a little sticker it said made in china 100 dollars. i think it came with a year warranty i'm like Wow, that's great. You know, here we go putting on backwards again. I'm like, wow, that's great. Um, just gonna make sure it's nice and snug. I could buy four of them for the price of uh, one. So it doesn't hurt to buy stuff off the internet. I just wouldn't buy no major car parts off of there, but. We're going to tighten this filter up, throw some oil in it. We're going to go from there. I was looking for my rag. It's on the other side of there on the chute. All right, we're going to wipe that off a little bit. I'm going to write the hours on there, even though this thing keeps its hours. I'm going to put the next time on there. I'm going to step in here and get my marker. Right back here. Uh, this engine, by the way, takes 10W30 motor oil this uh, Kohler V-Twin. That's what we're going to put in it. we got some right back here. These guys do not sponsor me, but right here you go. It says uh, 10W30 right there. Make sure that's what it says. Don't put some heavyweight motor oil in your lawn mower like 2050 and don't put 5W30 in it. Uh, you just don't need that from in the area where we live and even up north, you could probably run a 1030. Read your owner's man. It talks about running different grades of oil where it's colder, especially if you're going to use it for a snow plow in the wintertime or something. I do crank my stuff up in the wintertime. This is another one of them deals. This is mo this motor oil here. We got it at uh, Dollar General. Is that my clothes out? Uh, I believe it was buy a quart, get a quart free. Buy one, get one free. So instead of paying three fifty a quart, I got two for three fifty. So I went in, in the store there and I got me a grocery buggy. I got all the ten fifty. Uh, excuse me, I got all the ten thirty they had, all the ten forty they had, all the five W twenty, five W thirty, anything they had for half price. I got it. I used some of this in my car. It works great. Um. The 5W20 and 5W30. Um, I'm going to run that my Toyota. I got a couple of Toyotas. Actually, I got three there. Depending on which grade they take. Two of them take the the five grade, the five weight. The other one you can run 1030 and 1040. Doesn't matter. Either one. But that's what we're going to put in the lawnmower right here. And it says on the manual there, 58 uh, ounces for this particular engine. And we're going to put, which would be about six ounces less. We're going to try to measure out six ounces less, get it inside on level ground. And we're going to see if it will take the whole six ounces or not. Sometimes six ounces is right up to the line. So it'll take two quarts, but just don't overfill your lawnmower engine. Because if you overfill it, we're going to walk around here and I'll show you. It'll blow it right out the dipstick tube. Another little problem we have with the mowers right down here. Not so much on this particular model, but on some old Briggs and Stratton engines, they would leak right there. They got a little O-ring. I've seen motor oil. People add motor oil. Add it and add it. I've seen motor oil from here plumb back all the way underneath to the rear end. Well, to the rear end of the lawnmower because it leaked right there. Now I'm looking at that, folks. That looks pretty clean there. That's, you'll see some oil residue. 
Um, this is leaking down here a little bit where I didn't get it tight. That's not bad. I mean, I'm talking, I'm a quart low on oil, somebody said, and yeah, it's back there on the rear end of the lawnmower. That's, it's the heat and everything just pushes it back that way. All right, let's pause for a second and we'll get some, get the funnel and get some oil in this thing. Okay, we've moved inside where it's level ground. We've got a clean funnel here. And some of you might be wondering, I should have said that at the beginning, why are we doing a simple oil change video? Um, there are some people out there that probably don't know how to do this. They probably don't know about the oil leak problem on the other side. Um, a lot of people stuck at home, can't take their lawnmower out and get it fixed. Uh, they want to do it themselves, save some money, whatever. Um, when you change your oil, they get down here and change these grease fittings down here. You got some other... Casey's wondering what that screech was. It's, uh, I don't know if you can see it up there on the wall. A little white box up there. That's my intercom system. Wife says supper's ready, so, but we're going to finish this out right quick. That there's grease fittings underneath here and underneath you here, underneath on your, on your spindles. Right there's one of them. Get your owner's manual out and look at that. You also got grease fittings, like I said, on the front. You got some on the wheels right here. Uh, on some lawnmowers, they're right down here on this side. Grease those. Um, the other thing you want to do is air up these tires. Um, whatever it says, I always put about 10 pounds more than what it says on the tire. And the reason for that is because if you put what says on the tire in it, um, they don't like to hold air as well. They don't make a good seal. They want, they don't like to, sometimes they don't like to make a good seal around this bead right here. Uh, a little air, extra air pressure helps pop them out there. And the other thing is if you're running low on air, there's your valve stem. Uh, you run low on air, it makes it cut shorter to the ground. And this lawnmower is not that big of a deal, but there there is one particular brand that I worked on. Uh, I forget the name of it, but when it was on high up here, it was actually cutting like two inches or on, on notch number two is what it was actually cutting. Or like you had it on the ground level and aired it up and that raised it up to where high was actually mowing on three. And I kept wondering about that. And I was working on this lawnmower for somebody. And I'm like, well, I did a little research on the internet. And uh, guess what? They had a problem from the factory like that. And it's just the way they designed the lift management here. Um, but yeah, like I said, I did some research on the internet, found out that was a common problem told the customer and I told him what to do. I said, we're going to air these tires up uh, down here about 10 more extra pounds rear and front on your lawn mower. And she said, why? And I said, well, and I told her about the research, but this one mows about three inches on three. And that's usually what they should mow. Four is like three and a half inches. Usually it just raises up a little bit and it doesn't seem to be exactly an inch, but but what we're gonna do, we'll take some of this motor on, we'll dump it in there. And I think before I done this, it took the whole two quarts, but we're gonna pause for a second. And be sure that funnel's clean. Right there. I'm gonna take this jug and turn it over like this on its sideways. And it dumps in there real easy. Look how clean that oil is. I mean, that's almost like K rose syrup it's so clean. I mean, try it. You might like it. I mean that's the I mean that is that's unbelievable. We're gonna pause and we're gonna get these get this oil in. We're gonna check it and see what it says on the dipstick. Okay, this is important for you folks that don't have an hour meter. Write your hours down on your filter for the next oil change. Generally you change your oil every fifty hours. Some people say every season. Well, if you don't use it but 10 hours a season, uh, that's overkill. 
if you don't have a, <laughs> I guess if you don't have an hour gauge, you're not going to know. But you can estimate how many hours that uh, you're you're using your mower per year. Most of your new lawnmowers have some sort of hour gauge on it, but if it takes you an hour to mow and you mow 20 to 25 times a year, that's 25 hours, every two years will be fine. All right. Uh, then on the other side, we're going to talk about the six ounces of oil we were talking about that we'd have too much. And there it is. Right here at my fingernail, that's eight. Down here is four. And right in between there is six. So we're going to put all but six ounces in this lawnmower. And then we're going to take the other one. We'll put all of this one in. Then we're going to check the oil and see if it's on the dipstick like it's supposed to be right here to full mark. Right here. And we're going to do that after we run. Run it. Oh, I have my finger up. Right there it's a full, it says full. Your operating range is right here where all these little lines and cross marks are. If it's from there down, you need to add some oil. Consult your owner's manual. Why is that not focusing? <laughs> Consult your owner's manual and see how much it's supposed to have. And like I said, right up here is your full mark. A little bit right there won't hurt it. You don't want it to wait. I've seen customers with oil way up here on their dipstick and they thought they had too much oil in it. Come to find out the lawnmower engine was flooding. The carburetor was flooding out so bad that it was putting gasoline in the oil. That's a different story. And I wiped my finger across there like this and said, hey, that smells like, that smells like gasoline. So that's what we're gonna do next. And we're gonna pause right here. Okay, another thing, when you're pouring this oil in here like this, I got the lid back on it because I'm gonna throw it away. Put your lids back on there, and throw them away, and that way oil won't get everywhere. But as you're pouring, you want to take your other hand and raise this funnel up just a little bit so it can get some air. When it's down there like it, it doesn't go down as fast through the funnel like it should. Just raise up a little bit like that. Let her get some air. I'm going to show you a little something here I don't like about this lawnmower. There's your red positive, folks. Look right here. You can see it. Right there. And it came that way. This right here is your negative. But look at that, it's got red on it. Right over here. And I don't have enough light. But you can see possibly right there above my finger, that's black. I accidentally, I think, put the cable on here one time wrong because of that. I don't know. Actually, I think it was somebody else that done it. But um, you got a uh, voltage regulator under here, underneath this cover. And that right there will short out in a heartbeat if you connect your battery cables wrong. But what it was, I believe, I believe it was this joker right here. It's red now. That one's black. Both of uh, this one had corroded or faded out or something, and it was black looking. I think I stuck the wrong end on there by mistake, got in a hurry to crank the lawnmower to get to yard mode. And uh, I think that's what shorted it out. But since then, we got some red paint. We painted this thing nice and red. It had mold on it, and it looked almost the same color as that one, which it don't now. I cleaned it up. But uh, it's a good little unit. That was my fault. But boy, aren't those things pricey. Them little boogers right there, your voltage regulator. Um, I believe that's I believe that's the right term. Um, it charges. It, it's got to do with your charging on your battery. That little booger there was about fifty bucks. It's right up underneath there. You can't see it. You have to take your cover off. All right. Well, we've let the oil drain down. We're gonna crank this thing up. And we're gonna see if we need this other six ounces. If we do, we're gonna put it in a little at a time.
but we're gonna run it a while so we're gonna put this thing on pause once again and try to get this wrapped up this is a long video it's my first video like this and um, we're just getting started on this and it's taking a long time but like I said there's a lot of folks out there that don't know how to do this and they want to do stuff on their own I've got folks that have called me from time to time say hey can you come do this at my house for my lawnmower or come get it and uh, as you see here we got a little shop got a grinder over there we got some mowers in here to work with Oop. don't get those names <laughs> I guess it makes it different but we'll go to their house and work on their mowers sometimes we bring them back here to the shop but uh, we've got a little room in here to work we've got supplies things we need I believe right over there that welders what we're gonna do next time we're gonna see if we can't weld this piece of pipe here uh, that's back here to the actual coupler that I put on. See if we can't get all that welded up for the next time if I feel like it's leaking back there in the back and that way we can turn the whole thing completely out. But it looks like it's really dry back there. But Okay, here we go. Pause and we're going to run this thing for a little bit and see what see what the oil level is. And don't forget to put your dipstick in like I about did, getting in a hurry trying to make this video. I had it laying down here on the running board and I saw it and I was like, oh, put that in. Get that in there. Okay. The light you saw flashing was not low oil. That was the reminder to change your oil. And it says down here when it's flashing, 150 hours, and it says change, then it flashes and says oil. That's what that's for. Um, also, you have a parking, uh, parking brake light here. PTO engaged light and a battery light. These you can't really see out in the sun. Uh, you can see them here in the shop. Let's see. You can see right there, it says there, there's your voltage right there. There's your hours, 150 and there it says change. And this thing resets itself. You, there's no button to reset. It just does it on its own. There's your battery light. It's trying to light up when I got the key on a little bit. And let's see, PTO is not lighting up. I think it's not lighting up because I don't have the engine running, but you, you can hear it clicking. But there it is saying oil 150 change. I like that. That's a good little feature on, that, on this lawnmower. One other thing we did, we took our headlights. Instead of running your headlights all the time, um, that takes a little bit of power away from your lawnmower, not that much. This lawnmower is electric PTO, and if you don't have enough power, go into these electric PTOs on any electric uh, PTO lawnmower. Uh, you'll be out there in the yard mowing, it'll go dead if your battery's not any good, and you'll, you'll jump it off and you'll mow for five, ten minutes, and it'll go dead again. And uh, you'll go to crank it up, and... This thing right here is electric, so it pulls some juice. So if your battery's weak and it keeps going dead, you keep jumping it off, just go get you another battery. Go to your favorite store, get the cheapest one you can get. But that's one reason why we put in this little switch here. So my lights are off all the time. If I want them on, not that they shine that bright, but if, if, if I want them on, just pull them on. Just like that, boop. Disconnect, cut one wire down underneath the dash here. Right up there, there's two red wires that ran to the, right there you go. <laughs> Decided to use my light, but there's the switch, you can see it. If you want to modify yours, you can do that. It works pretty simple. There we go, we've got a light, I'm gonna hang our light on it. There's your contact points. Let's put your wire in. Run it back down there, right back over here, in your little pigtail. There it goes to your headlights out front. And here's what I was talking about this little thing. It's uh, about being red. Um, 
don't make the mistake and hook this up wrong. The other problem I see with people, I had a lady call me, she bought a new battery and she still wasn't cranked. She went to a store, I'm not gonna say where, they sold her battery. She hooked it back up, but this post was over here, that post was over there, they were switched, but they were still at the rear of the mower and she was able to connect them. Lama wasn't crank. Um, so what it did, she put the charger on it, wound up blowing up her starter solenoid. I went and tested it. Uh, this one's not on this side, I'll show you. Went and tested it. But yeah, they make a battery with a positive on this side and one positive on this side also. Um, it's a different group. When you get a battery, make sure it's just like what you had. Being she'd already bought a battery, what I did, I think her battery cables were up here. Um, but what I did, I was able to loosen the negative wire right here that goes down to the voltage regulator, which on her mower, it was down here on the side. And I was able to move it from that point. I think hers originally should have been up here, but I was able to move it from back there up here and she was able to crank her lawnmower once we replaced the starter solenoid. But she put it in the same position, which was, I looked at it and it looked right to me. But after I got to looking at it, I was like, rub that off. I'm like, there's your negative mark there. And well, on this battery, it's on the, uh, on the back side of it. And I was like, right there's your positive mark. So she had the wires connected on the wrong ends because they give her a battery where the terminals were opposite, the wrong battery group. Um, like this battery here is a 11U1L, I believe I see it. But uh, what I believe happened is when she picked her battery up, they didn't have one exactly like what she needed. They didn't know any better. She didn't know any better. Because when you turned her battery around, on hers, see my positive's over here on this side, which would be your left side of the lawnmower. Her positive was over here. Her regulator was right here on this side right here. Um, they give her a battery that was made like what I have here. And when she put that n negative on the positive terminal, um, let's see, she had the positive, and then this side was negative on her battery. She had my battery like this. She put the positive on the negative and the negative on the positive, which that's the only way it would reach. Because when I turned the battery around, and put this over there and that over here and switch them. See, this is at the rear and this is at the front. But when I spun the battery around, this cable from the starter solenoid down here would not reach. So I knew she hadn't made a mistake. And I told her, I said, you didn't mess up. Whoever gave you the battery messed up. I didn't see her battery group before she bought the new battery. So I don't know what it, which one it was, but Obviously, it wouldn't reach, and I think this cable over here barely would reach to the front. I think that's what we wound up doing. But they do make them on different sides, and it can be confusing. Um, if you got a lawnmower where they come up the side here, and the battery cables, I used to have a, a Murray the battery cable came right up the side, and it was underneath my seat. You could flip flop it all day long, it wouldn't matter which battery you had as long as you had the right cable on the right post because they came up right here in the middle. These lawnmowers, like this, they go back towards the rear. This goes back towards the rear. They're not in the middle. You have to have the correct size battery or you can goof up. All right, why are we talking about all that? Well, we're just letting the oil here drain down. She's been running for a while and we're gonna pull that dipstick out and check it.